whether it's a coral triangle or anywhere, the, the, the fundamental way that we believe that we can ensure their survival in the face of climate change is to apply our simple force component resilience model. And that, and to go through those steps one by one, the first one of these is a risk spreading component. We're, we need to manage for uncertainty. We, and, and the science, because the science of resilience is still developing, we're challenged sometimes to find the answers. So our response to that is to spread risk. And we do it by including examples of all different habitat types um, that we expect to find in the area and replicates of those. And, we need, and, and so we aim to include at least three replicates of every habitat type and to spread them out so that if any event comes through and takes out one, of one habitat type with its component of biodiversity and other benefits, others survived and hopefully to help it recover. So that concept of risk spreading is fundamental. The other one is, uh, another component is to invest in refugia, what we call re refugia. These are the areas that would be resistant to bleaching and that show um, the, uh, and that will then provide the seed to help the damaged areas recover. So uh, if you like, if you like to have, perhaps have a, an analogy with the with the, the investment of one's you know one's own uh, investment portfolio, the risk spreading uh, is like diversifying your portfolio. So you're spreading your investments over a number of stocks and shares, and so that if one collapses, others have, you know are there to make, keep you liquid, as it were, keep you afloat. And uh, and then investing in the refugia is like investing in the blue chip stocks. These are the things that are strong, that you know will keep on going, and that, that would be the foundation of your investment strategy. The next piece of it is connecting those refugia to the damaged areas. So understanding connectivity, so how the larvae are spread from, from the refugia and connected to the other areas. And uh, that's a critical piece, if you like, that's sort of maintaining liquidity in your investment portfolio so that things can move around and, and, uh, and one can buoy up another one. <clears throat> it's interesting that in Kimbi Bay, in Papua New Guinea, which is the world's first marine protected area network to be designed specifically to be resilient to climate change, uh, the science that is being done now is confirming our rules of thumb. So we're finding that indeed the, the areas that we have, the size uh, feature works and that it, the size is large enough to accommodate the shorter distance to the disperses and the spacing uh, rules of thumb that we've implemented there work too. So that the scientists are finding connectivity from one of the marine protected areas in the network to another that, um, and so that we are accommodating the various um, pieces. Of it. Mm -hmm. Then the fourth piece, the fourth piece of our resilience model, and absolutely the foundation for resilience, is the need to have effective management. If you like, that's what, that's the business as usual bit. Uh, that's what we do. We try to achieve effective management. We just need to do more of it, and we need to do it better. And uh, the reason for that is that the healthier we're able to maintain those reefs. The more we're able to reduce the stress on those reefs, the more naturally resistant and resilient those reefs will be. It's like you or I. If we maintain ourselves in good shape, we're better able to fend off flu, bugs, and other such things, and recover quickly from them. And that's that's the, we're using the same principle. We're applying the same principles to coral reefs to maintain them in maximum health, so that they can resist and re or recover.